afternoon and welcome to CSC Gurukul lecture. In continuation with the series on sociology of religion, in today's lecture, I am going to discuss Emile Durkheim's theory on religion. It is very important to begin understanding the theoretical understanding of religion because as we know, the objective of this series is to arrive at a sociological understanding which is kind of very different from how we would understand in theology or common sense and this has been discussed in the first lecture. So today we will try to understand the theory of Emile Durkheim who is considered as one of the founding father of sociology and kind of also comes in as a uh, thinker at the time when the discipline of sociology was emerging and he has contribut contributed immensely to the understanding of religion. To begin with, we will try to understand that he is giving us a functionalist understanding of religion. And through the understanding of religion, his theory, we will see how he is looking at religion as something that can create social solidarity, which is responsible for collective consciousness of the society. So we will go through the understanding of Durkheim's theory to arrive at a sociological understanding of religion. So to begin with, as we have said in the first lecture, which was an introduction to the series, that the religion is not, uh, sociology of religion is not trying to understand one particular religion. It's not trying to criticize another religion or support. And this we did in when we compared it to theology, which was in trying to figure out truth, one truth versus the other truth, one truth being more superior than the other truth. This is not the role of a sociologist. So what does a sociologist do? A sociologist, specifically with reference to Durkheim, will see, studies religion in terms of how it organizes people, in terms of how it regulates society, and how the uh, beliefs, practices also affects the members of a society. And this will be seeing it, there are different ways in which we can arrive at a sociology of religion. Uh, we will be doing in the following series on Marx, on Weber. So to begin with, we'll have a functionalist theory of religion. And his theory of religion, Durkheim's theory of religion, is part of his work called Elementary Forms of Religious Life. This is an in-depth study. It's a kind of a, a ethnographic study based upon the Australian Aborigine, where he did his research and he kind of looked into this simple society, a clan-based society, to give us an understanding what would be religion or to define religion and why did he select the Australian Aborigine? Because he felt that this society represented the most primitive and that is why the title of his book is Elementary Forms of Religious Life. In his work, he argues that if we are able to understand the most simplest, then we will be able to understand complex things because we are evolving from simple to complex. And therefore, in order to understand uh, religion, we also need to understand the context in which Durkheim was writing. And to begin to keep in mind that Durkheim was a positivist. A positivist approach in sociology makes an effort to understand science of society. They are trying to evolve a scientific study of society and putting that positivist science, applying positivist science to religion, he will give us a scientific theory of religion. And to keep in mind his other's work like the social fact, how we look into religion as a social fact which can be out there compared, observed and classified. So this is how he is applying his scientific understanding to evolve a discipline which is also scientific in nature. And he, therefore, he will be kind of not saying that this definition or the characteristic that he is talking about are specific to one religion, say Hinduism or any Christianity or Judaism. That's not his uh, objective. He is trying to understand at the elementary level. Of, and wha what is the advantage of doing that is that those features which are found in the elementary level would then be found at all levels, at every forms of society. So the features that he will be talking about are features which are uniform and universally found in all society. So when we look into the elementary forms of religious life, here he raises two fundamental questions and that is what is religion? 
rather he say kind of begins with trying to answer what is not religion he will kind of uh, argue against religion as supernatural religion as believe in deity and therefore from that uh, negation that what it is not he will arrive at what religion is and the second question which is very fundamental to durkheim is the function of religion as i already said that he is arriving at a functional understanding of religion and through his understanding of totemism he will kind of give us a understanding that the collective consciousness is something which is emerging from religion and therefore the society is sacred the society is god and that's the function of religion it keeps society integrated it the it keeps the collective consciousness of the society uh, at a high and therefore he is going to a uh, uh, kind of emerge from the study of a primitive society to arriving at a definition of religion which would apply uniformly to all religion now before we go into his theoretical understanding it is very important to understand why durkheim selected the australian aborigin which he kind of described as the primitive society and therefore he says that using the primitive society uh, is kind of first reason is that it is a simple society to study a simple society becomes a much easier to understand the essential features because the complex would be taking features from elementary so in order to understand start studying something at the uh, beginning or at the base you need to study at a simple level and the second is that these societies are different from our own experience and therefore the objectivity will be possible that you are will not be able to bring in your subjective bias you will be able to understand religion as it is practiced among the primitive society and what was he looking for he was looking for the elements or rather in simple words he was looking for certain features which was found in the primitive society which would be used to understand the con- complex society or society which was found in the advanced modern society and therefore he was in search of permanent features features that would continue to evolve from even when society is undergoing change and transformation these features would remain integral of the society and therefore it he was kind of arriving at a generalized understanding of religion now when we look into the context in which uh, durkheim was writing and if we go back to the entire discipline historical understanding of discipline and we see that the discipline of sociology was emerging at a time of industrial revolution large scale changes were taking place urbanization migration and there was also this argument of secularization that move people were moving away from uh, beliefs and practices in supernaturals and were moving more towards scientific rational temperament so in this context he is wanting to see that this is not only religion that could be relegated to the tradition or could be relegated to something which is uh, completely uh, private it is something which is to be secularized and it is a practice which keep society together and therefore it is kind of a practice which will ha- keep the moral regulation of society so he is more in terms of looking it at religion at the level of moral at the level of consciousness and there uh, when the society is moving from collective to individual and there were lots of theories saying that most society is moving from the simple society to complex market based society where individualism has become more and the the desire to be in a community was declining he, here he brings in a theory which says the religion in itself can help in bringing back that moral uh, uh, collectivity and it can keep the society com- uh, united so those who kind of uh, was a kind of a debate between people who kind of relegated religion to the traditional and those who said that it was more political uh, economy was part of the modern society it was here where his theory becomes positive and he says that it is a middle po- position demonstrating the truth of religion through scientific analysis though you know and we will see when we kind of go into the next lecture where we talk about religion and science 
Durkheim considers religion as science because both are about reality, both are about helping us make sense of society and therefore it is kind of um, very much a part of advanced modern scientific society. So we come back to understanding of the first question in the book, The Elementary Forms of religion, uh, uh, Life, where he raises two questions. One is what is religion? And there he says that it is not the belief in supernatural, where he is saying that in order to have a supernatural, we need to kind of have some understanding of what is natural. And therefore, religion cannot be kind of considered as something which is ordinary, something which is uh, natural. Neither is, is it something which is mysterious or something which is unknownable uh, because it is all about reality which is talking between. So, it is natural and supernatural. We see that the supernatural would have come much later in history, whereas religion itself is there uh, with the beginning of the society. So, religion cannot be a part of the supernatural. He negates is the idea that religion has anything to do with the supernatural. The second he says that it is also not to do with spiritual being or personalized gods because it is the society which will come in and it is the society which gives attributes to certain individual to certain deity which then becomes personified as gods. So, it has to be the it cannot be the other way around that you have personalized, personalized gods and from there religion is emerging. But, uh, moreover, there are many religions across in society in the world which has no relation with any kind of spiritual being or human beings. For example, Buddhism, Jainism, there are so many beliefs where you do not have the belief in a personified individual who is worshipped. The third is kind of an understanding that if it is not to do with the mysterious, if it is not to do with the supernatural, it is not to do with personified gods, then what is the uh, what is religion? So, for Durkheim, the entire world can be divided into the sacred and the profane. The sacred is something which is out uh, there, it is a higher position and the profane is something which is mundane, routine and all over. So, there is a hierarchy that he creates and he says that the sacred is also superior than the profane and religion belongs to the domain of sacred. So, religion in its most elementary sense uh, is what he would define in, we will see this again later where he would say that religion is all beliefs and practices related to the sacred and what uh, how do we understand what is sacred is sacred which would be kind of given a symbolic meaning by the society by believers of that practice that those who kind of consider it as at a particular point of time of more importance of more significance would be considered as sacred. So, where is this source of uh, the experience of sacred? How do we realize that what is sacred and what is not? And the, in here, he would kind of negate uh, the theory of animism and naturism as the most simplest uh, religion. And Durkheim argument is that it is totemism, the practice among the Australian aborigines which is considered to be the most simplest form of religion. And why is he said not animism? Because he says that uh, animism is kind of believed in the, uh, the worship of certain hallucination dreams which leads to the belief in souls and spirit and souls and spirits becomes the worship uh, objects of cult and worship. He, exp he rejects this idea of animism and he says that religion cannot be based on illusion. Why? Because religion is to do with everyday reality. Religion is how you live your reality, how you are able to make sense of the society. So, religion, if we go by animism, then it could be more in terms of illusion. And then he also rejects the theory of naturism. Not naturism, he argues that human action provides the metaphors of understanding the process of nature. Naturism is the uh, worship of natures around the flora, the fauna and uh, there are a lot of myths associated with it and over a period of time these myths kind of gets uh, uh, transformed into certain belief which people start giving more significance and starts giving it a higher play order. He rejects, Durkheim rejects the explanation because it does not explain the sacred significance 
of routine aspect of nature because nature has both profane and routine every day for instance if we kind of in naturism we say water is worshiped but water is also for everyday consumption it is also a profane then how do you kind of base the idea of the sacred within the nature which is worshiped and he says that religion cannot be based on false religion Uh, reasoning so the first he rejects animism because religion cannot be based on hallucination second he rejects naturism because it cannot be based on false reasoning and therefore he defines religion as eminently social he rejects it as a supernatural he rejects uh, uh, religion does not require any spiritual beings and there can be many rites and beliefs there can be many rituals in which god is not there so a uh, sacred where, where when he classifies the world into the sacred and profane there may be many components of sacred which requires no deity which requires no spiritual being and it has no supernatural belief so therefore for dorkheim religion is only something which is found in reality in the society rather he would go ahead and say society is god so all religious powers do not emanate for, uh, from divine personality and their relations of cult which have other objects uniting men to a deity so it is more than the idea of god religion is more than the idea of god and spirits and it cannot be ex- defined exclusively in relation to the latter when he goes on to understand the study of religion which is very important how do we go about studying religion he outlines two task for a sociologist or anyone interested in the st- sociological study of religion number one is define religion and why because we need to have a definition of religion else we will end up doing two mis- uh, errors one we will omit practices which would be considered as religious and the second error is we could include elements of rites practices which are not religious therefore for dorkheim we need to have a very clear cut definition of what is religion and if we go by the previous understanding we see he has already said that religion is not a belief in supernatural religion is not the belief in deity or god religion is not in the belief in spirits and souls and neither is religion the belief in natural fauna and flora so for dorkheim religion is social social something an idea which is emerging from within the members of the community according to dorkheim by doing uh, by defining religion and when we look into the definition of religion it includes both it will include both rites and beliefs the uh, beliefs are ideas you have to have certain ideas and in order to consider those idea as more significant you will have certain practices so you will kind of believe that society is important is an idea so what is the practice the practice or the action is then therefore you will not think about your individual self your sacrifice your individual desire for the welfare of the society so the whole idea is lot of kind of debates in terms of lot of practices which are individualistic oriented so dorkheim would say that it is not religious religious idea emerges only in the collective according to dorkheim so the two major elements in defining religion are number 1 it's a system of beliefs practices and rites so we need to include both ideas as well as actions and then there are certain rituals to kind of uh, legitimize those ideas and practices and these rites and rituals are directed only towards sacred not towards the profane so what is to be considered as object of worship are objects which are sacred in society it is therefore it a kind of second element of religion is that their opinion that consistent representation and the so what are the representation the representation is the fact that individual belong to a society you represent your society so you in order to ensure that the society is moral order is maintained you as a representative of the society 
will not indulge in any activity that will affect the moral order of the society that is what is Durkheim. The second elementary form was tendency in all religion to define the world into two categories sacred and profane which we have already said that first what Durkheim says is the entire universe can be divided into sacred and profane. And what is sacred? Sacred are objects which are of significance, which has a symbolic meaning or relevance. And profane are everyday mundane uh, activity. Now this distinction between sacred and profane according to Durkheim is symbolic because the meaning is relative. What at one point of point is to be considered as sacred and another point can become profane. So the flowers which are used in say for the time of a worship is sacred whereas if it is outside as a part of beautification of the house or the garden then it is profane. And this distinction between sacred and profane forms the basis of religion in every aspect. So the sacred things are considered as superior in dignity and power than the uh, uh, profane thing. And uh, you know uh, we, uh, the second uh, step of study of religion according to Durkheim is that we do away with our preoccupation. We do not have any kind of passion or habit that is he is arriving at a scientific or an objective study of religion. So when he arrives at a religion, we need to keep in mind two or three things. One, the division of the society into sacred and profane. Number two, it performs a functional role. That is, religion in society helps us to keep the collectivity in order. It helps us to regulate moral regulation of the society. And the third is, which is the most significant understanding of Durkheim is, the society is God. For him, it is in the collectivity that the realization that we are part of one society is the strongest. And when this society, when we consider the society as sacred, when we consider society as uh, God, then we will do away with our individual biases, we will do away with our bias needs and we will start looking, looking towards a collectivity. So the demand to for move from collective to individual get reversed and we will have a society of moral order. This is the theory of Durkheim and for reference it is always good to read the original text and the name of the text is The Elementary Forms of Religious Life written by Emile Durkheim. With this I come to an end of today's lecture. Thank you.